Hello. It's Sarah. How are you? Um. Oh, boy. I wanted to talk about something that is sort of I was thinking about um, the last day or so. Actually, maybe just today. Um, you know, I'm coming to um, four years. Wow. Yeah, four years. I, I'm actually four years of being a hormone placement therapy. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and talk about the effects of it over the last um, years. And, um, <clears throat> and I, that's all I really want to talk about. Um, in terms of my transition, I don't want to go into some of, I don't want, there's a part of it, I'm, not, I'm only going to talk about the medical part of it um, right now, and so that's all I'm talking about today. Um, so I started my transition in the late spring of 2011, and I didn't start what's called hormone replacement therapy for a while because I was a little bit um, afraid of the hormones. Um, I was, um, I was doing research, I didn't have a doctor, um, so no one to really guide me, and I, I've heard about some horror stories of transsexual women in the past who have died of strokes and blood clots and all kinds of horrible things related to hormones, because um, transsexual women in the 50s <clears throat> or, or the 60s, 70s, uh, were using these uh, hormones they were getting on the black market and taking them, and people noticed that they, you know uh, some of these women had just who were young women just started dying of things like blood clots, which um, you know that you might get you know later in age, and they trace it to these um, illegal hormones what they were doing to their body. Um, and the reason anyone like myself, a transsexual woman, who would do hormones is because we want to re, you know, replace the balance of hormone in our bodies that wasn't present at birth. And, um, particularly when, like myself, I was assigned the wrong gender at birth, so I wanted to have the correct balance of hormones in my body. And, um, and that's why most, um, transsexual women will use hormones is to get that correct balance um, and there's two types of hormones in the body of every human being and that's um, testosterone and estrogen every human being <clears throat> on the planet has both of those hormones in them maybe at very minute levels but they have both of course males have a preponderance of testosterone, which is the male hormone. And um, this is where I'm not going to remember, <laughs> remember it, but hormones uh, are, um, they're, uh, <laughs> oh my God. okay, testosterone is measured in nanograms per decimeter, decimeter, <laughs> which is NG over DL, okay. Is that I don't have to say that word anymore. You can look it up. Um, <laughs> so an average male, and this, you know, this lets you know how much hormone should be in your body. An average guy has between 280 and 1100 and nanograms per deciliter of hormones in their body. So all you have to remember is the score is between 280 and 1100. And it depends, like when you hit puberty and you're really pumping out, pumping out the, that testosterone, you're going to have more than if you're like 60 years old, <laughs> okay? And these virile, strong men who are, you see out there, um, they have a high level of testosterone in their body, okay? As you get older, you start to lose some testosterone. But when you're young and strong, that's testosterone, you know, promotes strength, libido, <laughs> Muscle, you know, um, aggression, competitiveness, all those type, all those things come from testosterone. 
women, um, they have between 30 and 95 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone in them. So we see women who are extremely competitive and, um, and strong, you know, they have higher levels of testosterone in their body. Women who work out, you know, at their, at their peak, they have higher, they have the higher level of testosterone in their body. Okay, so that's that. Men also have estrogen in their body. Now, it might, might be a very minute, quali minute quantities. <laughs> okay, so estrogen, estrogen is measured in picograms per milliliter. So, <laughs> so PG slash ML, you can look that up too. That's the, I just had to look it up. Um, so estrogen level in men um, averages between 25 and 50. Okay, so let's think of that. You know, you have like, 300, you score of 300 in testosterone and 25 to 50 in um, estrogen. So that's kind of like the average guy. Um, women, as I told you, was uh, between 30 and 95 of testosterone. But women, their est estrogen is has a very wide range. It depends if they're ovulating, it depends if they're menstruating, it depends if they're pregnant. If they're pregnant, they have a whole ton of it, <laughs> okay? Um, if they're in ovulation, it's probably averaging around um, 200. Uh, 200 um, picograms per milliliter. 200, 300, that, that range. Um, and so it, the woman's cycle, you know, it, it does fluctuate, and women who, um, no longer menstruate, and um, you know, the older women, they could be very low in estrogen, and that's why they have, uh, start to have a lot of problems, and they start they might they might need hormone replacement therapy. Um, <clears throat> so that's touched a little bit about that. So we both have both hormones. So because of the um, mistake of birth with me, I have way more um, male hormones. And so I had to get that corrected. So that's why I did hormone replacement there. Now, um, oops, got my bra is a little broke here. Sorry. It's got this little wire here that's kind of broke. But anyway, so um, not all trans women um, will do hormone replacement therapy. Um, those of us who do, we really consider ourselves transsexual women. Um, and I won't go into all the definitions right now, um, but I, I just really want to talk about um, what it does for me. Okay, so um, this is my estrogen that I take, and I take it in injection form. When I started hormone replacement therapy four years ago, I used transdermal patches, but now I, I, get, I get this shot every 10 days or every week. And um, I also take spironolactone, which is a um, testosterone blocker. <laughs> and I take progesterone. Okay, micronized progesterone. Those, those are my hormones. Um, <clears throat> so when I started, I did all my reading, I did all my research. I still didn't find a doctor yet, so I did start my um, hormone replacement therapy. I started it in February of 2011. And I started it uns unsupervised, which is a very, very dangerous thing to do. Um, but I did a whole bunch of research on my own, and I tried to use the safest route in low doses until I could find a doctor. And I got it. I did get it from overseas in this place called um, In-House in Pharmacy. And so I wish I could have found a doctor right away so I can get my levels checked. Because, again, it is extremely dangerous. So anyone who's out there and wants to start hormone replacement therapy, you never want to do it without a doctor. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so when I started, I just started with the testosterone blocker. Okay, so what spirolactone does, um, <clears throat> it, it's, a, it's a sort of a biological function, but it... it <clears throat> Because testosterone is still made by my body at great quantities, I guess, but the spiral kind of cuts it off at the source so it doesn't go through the rest of my body. 
Um, this continues to be made by testicles, but it, it kind it kind of is trapped and stopped there, and then it, it doesn't. I'm not sure of the whole biological function of it, but for some reason it sort of stops and is absent. And um, also it it's a high blood pressure medication, so it does. They stopped using it for men. I think I think when it was made, it was like made for like high blood pressure. Then they said, hmm. The men who are taking this are starting to get boobs. <laughs> they can't perform anymore. And then they said, oh, if you take higher quantities of it, it's a testosterone blocker. Now, um, there are other testo testosterone blockers out there. Um, some of them have, like Spiro. Spiro doesn't have a lot of side effects. Um, you just can't, you have to uh, watch your potassium intake. So I, I don't eat bananas anymore. <laughs> Or anything with high potassium because it's potassium sparing so <clears throat> you could run into some problems if you have a high potassium diet and you take spiral you, you can run into some serious medical problems um they have other medications that are testosterone blockers um have you ever heard of like um sex offenders who opt for medical castration well, that castration basically is a testosterone blocker. It keeps the testosterone from coming in your body. And there's that medication that uh, I think is, is popular in Europe that a lot of trans women take over there. I think in America, most people, most adults who are, who are through puberty, who transition are taking spiral because it has less side effects. Um, it will still make you sterile because I am sterile because that doesn't matter because, <laughs> because you know what? For me, that's the point. So I am sterile. Um, then I started taking estrogen in April 2011. I'm sorry, April 2012. So I started Spiro in February 2012. I started estrogen in April 2012. So then I was on the full course of hormone replacement therapy. Um, <clears throat> so I'll talk about some of the effects. Um, the very first thing that I noticed when I, when I was on hormone replacement therapy is nipples were, got, were very painful. I felt that pain almost immediately. Um, and I have another, I have another um, YouTube video that talks about my bras and stuff and boobs and all that, so I'm not going to talk about that here. But let's just say that right around the nipple area got extremely painful. And I wasn't wearing a, I mean, I was wearing a bra. I was wearing one with a lot of cushion. They're, they have these fake bras that some trans women use because they just pretend like they, not, not to pretend, but to give the, the um, appearance of having boobs. I, don't, I didn't want to use that. I, I just, that wasn't for me. Um, so I was pretty much flat chested, but, um, but I used uh, bras with a lot of cushion. Um, I remember one time though, I was, I used to jog a lot. So one night I was going jogging. I didn't have a bra because I had a flat chest. Didn't need a bra. So I was just going jogging and it was like the chafing. It was like the most pain I had ever felt jogging. So from then on, from then on I had to wear it. So boobs, um, that, that pain is what I felt. I felt that. Um, now in terms of um, having boobs, which, see, <laughs> I mean, but cleavage and all that, but it, takes a while to, but that takes a while to develop um it could take up to four years to be to go to true maturity of, of, of the way it's going to be and it's usually indicated by um the uh, breast size of uh, natal women in your family so that might for for trans women so if you have sisters or mom who have really big boobs or whatever then yours will probably be bigger as they grow. So it's genetics a lot. <clears throat> a lot of the boob growth is, ge is genetic it's in your family for the women in your family. Okay, so that started. Um, I also noticed um, that my skin started to get really soft. It is so soft now. Oh my god. Um, and it's like I had a colleague at work, and this was like in the early days. So I was only on hormones about two months, and she bumped into me while I'm staying, and she's like, "Oh my goodness, your skin is so soft." <laughs> I mean, so that happens pretty quick. Um, your skin does get really thin too, so 
you can feel more impacted by heat and cold. Um, I am really, really impacted by heat. Like, I get really hot really quick, really, really, really quick. Um, and that's part of, of the estrogen and, and the um, and the spiral. <laughs> um, you lose muscle, you lose muscle tone. Um, I noticed that around maybe two or three months that I just was a lot weaker than I was before. Like opening doors got harder. I was I was an avid runner then. Oh, running got so hard. I mean, I could run the distance. Like I remember in the summer of 2012 going for a 12 mile run. It was at this agonizingly slow pace, like because I started losing muscle mass, and so you get a lot weaker. Because um, when your testosterone, which promotes muscle growth, once you cut that off, I mean, you get a lot weaker. And I got really, really weak. Um, I was about as strong as any natal female my my, my age, <laughs> um, and that's that's still goes to today. I, I am really, really weak. I it's hard to lift anything. I mean, <laughs> I get tired quick, a lot quicker. And like I said, the heat and cold affects me a lot, a lot more than it did. Um, okay. Um, libido decreases. Um, as I mentioned before, um, testosterone can increase libido. You take away testosterone. My libido flatlined. I did not think about sex. In my old life, um, I wouldn't mind why I masturbated. Um, didn't think about that. It just, I had a boyfriend at the time when I first started on, on it. And sex was just to please him. I didn't really get a lot of pleasure out of it anymore. Um, and so my libido just, I didn't, like, they say men think about sex every 17 seconds or 17 minutes or some crazy statistic or whatever. I didn't think about it at all. Not one bit. I mean, it went for months. I didn't even think about it. Um, but I thought more about it. It became more of an emotional thing. Like, I thought more of romance. Like, being ro romantic or being being romance. Like, sort of, it, it left from the physical part to, I say, a higher plane. It wasn't like the sort of animalistic nature of sex but it felt like just being treated right by somebody and, and falling in love and things like that that's it became a lot more up, up here than down here um and actually that's one thing i actually really like about it because i'm not you know you, your whole life when you're you're like or like most males think about sex a lot and then they tend to view people through a, vi a visual lens, and I, I feel like I can see the whole person now, and I don't just look at that at all. Um, and it's, I really like it. I, I like being more in control of my libido than it controlling me, so that's that's one thing I really like about transitioning. Um, changes in body odor, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to preface this. Let me preface this like this. In my old life, in my pre-transition life, presenting as a male, I had to use deodorant every day, sometimes twice a day. If I didn't use it one day, it was like, ooh, I mean, I would notice it. So um, there was one day, and I started using women's deodorant, right? Because like, everything I, I switched over to female. <clears throat> but anyway, sometime around, that summer of 2012, a few months in, I had forgot to buy deodorant. Because um, sometimes the, the cue to using deodorant is you should smell. You know, it's like a, 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 a bad smell. But there wasn't that cue, so I, like, I think I went a few days. And then I noticed, then I was getting, I just finished working out, I was getting ready to get in the shower, and I noticed, whoa, you haven't used deodorant in a few days. And so I, I, was, a, a, I was just, expecting to, to, to smell that funky smell, and I lifted my own smell, it was like, there was no odor at all, there was nothing. Not bad, not good, nothing. It was almost if I would have smelt my kneecap or something. That scared me, I said, what the fuck? 
what the heck is happening here? So I had to do some research. I had to dig into my research. And apparently what happened is the sweat glands that are underneath my armpits totally shut down. They totally shut down. They're, they're no longer sweat glands there anymore. Um, and that was, that doesn't happen to everybody. Um, I mean, it doesn't happen to like, like prenatal, I mean, excuse, sorry, natal women have to use deodorant. And this doesn't happen to every transsexual woman either, but I noticed that there was just, there was no odor. There was no, there was no need to use deodorant. I mean, it's not, do you put deodorant on your kneecap? Because there was no longer any sweat glands. There's no longer any, uh, so I haven't used deodorant since 2012. <laughs> And it's, you know, because there's no need to, there's, <laughs> that was, I didn't expect that. I mean, I, I did look it up and it says, yes, um, your odor, your odor, your, or the scent of a woman is different than a scent of a guy. Um, a women, women's scent, if you sort of even look back to, <laughs> to our cave people ancestries, the scent of a woman was to, um, attract men. So it was a more of a flowery, kind of a sweet scent. And men had that strong, musky scent. And women, that would turn women on. You know? <laughs> so, that was, that was pretty cool. I like that. You know, it's like, wow. That took me by surprise. That, you know, and no need to use the odor anymore. Um, and it's just like it's a whole different scent of my entire body, which is that was <laughs> I didn't know that was gonna happen. Um, the curvature of your eyes change, um, which I, if I look at pictures of me now, pictures of me before, and that's part of um, I guess the fat redistribution, like fat redistributes all over your body. Um, I have a bigger butt now than I've ever had before, <clears throat> and <clears throat> my legs still look, my legs look nice. I mean, it's not as muscled as it was before, but I, but I have long legs. My legs, I like my legs. <laughs> Most guys like my legs, too. Um, and of course, yeah, this boob growth is, you know, the, the result of a few years. Um, so it's good to have clean, I like that. Um, is there anything else? Um, <clears throat> that might be the physical changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, lack of muscle growth, your boobs grow, your skin's extremely soft, change in body odor, um, libido, loss of libido, skin thinning. Um, now there's, there are also emotional changes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you will cry, um, but it's kind of, it's different though, because men cry, I think they just hold it back. They don't let themselves cry, you know, because they think they worry it's not being manly to cry. So it's not that a woman cries more, it's like that you give yourself permission to cry. I mean, I've cried and just felt so awesome after it's like, that was such a release. I mean, like a man, like, you know, you know, you want to break something or smash something or punch your hand to a wall or get it or go fight somebody, you know, get your, get it out that way, which is extremely negative. Um, I've cried and I just felt so, so much better afterwards. I felt awesome afterwards. Um, it's not just crying though. It's not, people will get on my nerves. <laughs> you know, it's like you get on my nerves. <laughs> Like sometimes I feel frustrated and like I have an attitude, you know. Like you know, some women got all, got an attitude, yet yeah, not. Like, yeah, sometimes I got an attitude. <laughs> so, um, but emotion, the, the emotions of, of a female is it's naturally me, um, and so I I don't mind it. I just have to check myself to make sure I'm not, you know, that I'm, I'm not taking it out on people or whatever, that I'm just being, being uh, more, <laughs> being more conscious of, of it. Um, and what helps me though, 
I take the uh, progesterone. Now, what the progesterone is supposed to do is enhance the breast, de breast development, but it doesn't do that for everybody. Um, for some people, progesterone doesn't do much at all. But one thing it does for me is it makes my emotions on an even keel because I could have my emotional range could be very wide. Um, and I have a lot of girlfriends, natal, natal girlfriends, whose emotional range is, is extremely wide, you know. And sometimes it could be if if they're um, you know going through a period or or uh, or whatever you know where your you know your emotions are all over the place. Um, that happens to me too um, when I don't <clears throat> when, I, when I don't take the progesterone. I mean, my emotions can be sometimes all over the place, so I take that um, and it keeps me even. The only thing it does though is um, it really increases your appetite. That's one another thing with. HRT, your appetite will increase. Like I, <laughs> like I, when I started out, I was like size four. Now I think I'm like, I don't know, probably size eight now. Like I'm squeezing into size six. <laughs> it's like, so I'm trying to work out to get the weight down. I mean, it's, I'm not like fat, fat, but I can definitely lose it. <laughs> I can lose the weight. Um, and um, anyway, so I think that's it. Um. <laughs> How do I look at my pants? Oh, what about me seeing? These are my jeans. Woo <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, and so I think that's pretty much a lot of the, all the changes or most of the changes for hormone replacement therapy. Um, so. So let's get to the point where you want to know what my hormone level is right now. Okay, remember I said um, the average hormone level, testosterone level for females between 30 and 95, and you need you need you need like you see women who are really competitive. You need testosterone in your body so it makes you competitive. It, it does a lot for you, you know, you got to have some muscle. <sighs> My testosterone level is three. It's three. It's only three. Average for a woman, a female, is between 30 and 95. Average for a man is between 280 and 1100. Mine is three. Extremely low. <laughs> um, do I notice it? Well, I'm weak because I don't know why. Um, I'm not competitive at all. Um, my libido came back a little bit just over the natural course of time, and I have a boyfriend now, so um, he can bring he can bring my libido out of me. Some things he does, so so it's low. And my estrogen level is around 200, between like 180 something and. 210 in that range. So it's in the ovulation range. <laughs> and um, <laughs> women are ovulating, they're ready to conceive. So I'm in the ovulation range. And my um, testosterone is really low. <laughs> so I tend to be, um, even though of the natal women that I know, I tend to be the most. <clears throat> The girly girly of them <laughs> it's like, it's like, but it's me it's always been me I just this side of me never came out that's why so um that's a little bit and um I don't know in terms of my transition my hormone levels are good I like that um, I like them to stay where they're at I haven't had any any physical issues I used to get cramps you know like, I used to cramp up a lot, but then that passed. Um, that might have been a, a side effect of the hormones. Um, I've never had anything close to getting um, blood clots or anything like that. Thank goodness, knock on wood. And um, I'm extremely feminine, you know, and I like that. I mean, that's me. Um, and I guess that's, that's all I have to say about that. And... Um, if if new um, transsexual women start hormones, it's 
I just encourage you to start with a doctor because you want to get those blood tests because those blood tests will tell you if things are going right. And I risk <clears throat> that was a big risk for me. Um, and I would if I did it over again, I wouldn't do it that way because um, I want to. You want to have that healthy balance. Um, when I finally did get blood tests, um, I found out that my um, estrogen was low, was lower than it should have been. You know, and I wouldn't have known that if I didn't go get a blood test and figure that out. And I'm healthy, and I'm actually healthier now than I was in my own life. Um, believe it or not, I've had, say it's been five years since I started my transition. Ten years all before that, I had extremely high blood pressure. I mean, dangerously high blood pressure. Um, <laughs> my blood pressure is normal now. <laughs> Thank you, Spyro. <laughs> anyway, so that's me, and um, that's a little bit about transitioning and hormone replacement therapy, and um, all right, bye. <laughs> Sexy Sarah says goodbye. <laughs>